Welcome to the Scourgey Law Lunch Break. This is your time of the day to learn a little bit about the law while you enjoy your lunch. Well, the report is in. Rachel Mitchell, the sex crimes prosecutor who examined Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and Judge Brett Kavanaugh during last week's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, has concluded that not only is the evidence insufficient to justify criminal charges against Judge Kavanaugh, it doesn't even rise to the much lower level needed to bring a civil suit. This is a stunning rebuke of Dr. Ford personally and the allegations she's made that Judge Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her 36 years ago when they were both in high school. The rebuke of Dr. Ford is even more significant considering Mitchell is an award-winning sexual assault prosecutor and chief of the Special Victims Division in Maricopa County, Arizona. She's been lauded by former Democratic Governor and Obama Cabinet official Janet Napolitano for her strong advocacy on behalf of sexual assault victims. From calling for stronger laws against sexual assault and for changes in the courtroom to make them more comfortable for victims, Mitchell has led the way to make the criminal justice system more favorable to sexual assault victims. One couldn't ask for a prosecutor more sensitive to victims. With all those accolades and with the entire media and Democratic Party screaming that Dr. Ford must be believed, because she's a woman, it's no wonder Mitchell conducted a velvet glove, largely hands-off examination of Dr. Ford. Now, in Mitchell's defense, the structure of the hearing made it impossible to conduct a proper examination. That's because the search for the truth, which is the purpose of direct and cross-examination, was interrupted every five minutes, first by Democrats, then by Republican senators, pontificating and posturing for the television cameras. In any event, Mitchell did have several uninterrupted five-minute segments during which she chose not to ask basic questions designed to test the credibility of Dr. Ford. Mitchell chose not to examine Dr. Ford as to her bias, prejudice, or other motive that might affect her testimony. In a real hearing, the failure to cross-examine a witness as to bias and motive could subject an attorney to a claim for malpractice. It's basic standard stuff that is part of most every civil and criminal trial. Any defense attorney worth her her salt would have conducted this examination and would have had a field day with Dr. Ford. How about these simple questions? Dr. Ford, isn't it true that you're a registered Democrat? Isn't it also true that you've regularly donated to the Democratic Party and Democratic politicians? Isn't it true that you donated to the Bernie Sanders for President campaign? Isn't it true that you've attended Women's March, during which speakers speak out against President Trump? Isn't it true that you've donned the pussy hat at these marches? Isn't it true that you've signed a letter denouncing President President Trump's policies uh, and calling them inhumane? The answers to all these questions are yes, and they're easily provable. But they weren't asked. Clearly, Mitchell was holding her punches to appear fair to the victim. I say fair in quotes. Remember, female victims must be believed. I say that in quotes. Yet even though Mitchell was fighting with one hand tied behind her back and the other covered in a powder puff glove, she managed to land some blows. Mitchell did well with the map showing the eight mile distance as the crow flies from the Columbia Country Club to Blasey Ford's home. Ford couldn't remember how she got to the house party or how she got home after she claims to have run out of the house after the alleged sexual assault. That's simply not credible. She had no car and no mobile phone. She's in the suburbs. Mitchell also did a nice job exposing Dr. Ford's claim that the alleged sexual assault prevents her from flying. Dr. Ford maintains that she suffers from anxiety, claustrophobia, and post-traumatic stress disorder, and that these disorders were either caused or contributed to by the alleged sexual assault. Mitchell explains that the date of the hearing was delayed because the committee was informed that her symptoms prevent her from flying. Yet during her testimony, Ford agreed that she flies fairly regularly, frequently, uh, for her hobbies and work. She flies to the Mid-Atlantic at least once a year to visit her family. She's flown to Hawaii, French Polynesia, and Costa Rica. She also flew to Washington, D.C. for the hearing. So how is Dr. Ford prevented from flying? It's just not credible. Jurors are instructed to assess the witness's credibility by relying upon inferences drawn from the ordinary experiences of life and common knowledge as to the natural tendencies of human nature. Yes, even female witnesses must be tested on their credibility. There's no exception because one is or identifies as female. 
Notably, many point out the flaw in Dr. Ford's case is that she has no witnesses to corroborate her account. However, a victim does not need any corroborating witnesses to make out a legally sufficient claim that he or she has been sexually assaulted. Many valid convictions occur after a he said, she said trial in which there's no corroborating evidence. Indeed, Dr. Ford had no corroboration, but she still needed to have been credible. Ford wasn't. Well, that's about all the time we have today for the Scourgey Law lunch break. I hope you uh, learned a little bit more about my analysis of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford's testimony and the memo by the prosecutor, Rachel Mitchell. And I want to thank you for listening today and enjoy your lunch.